planet was created from fragments of the universe. Then life was born. It would grow, expand, and survive, often being sustained by the planet itself. Life kept expanding its frontiers, but most would branch away and fade into extinction. Until finally, one would survive to look out upon the universe and wonder what role it would play in the race for life on the miracle planet. Fifty-five million years ago, dinosaurs had vanished into extinction. The world was left to mammals. It was still a restless earth. Forces deep within were at work. In 2003, scientists from the University of Oslo discovered strange formations on the bottom of the sea, off the coast of Greenland. They found some 800 holes, almost as if they had been drilled. They were about two and a half miles deep, and they have been dated to 55 million years ago. The continents were still being shunted across the globe. Slowly and steadily, powerful forces were at work under the Earth's crust. The continent of Europe began to break away from what is now Greenland. Deep within the sediment of the seafloor, vast reserves of methane hydrate a highly flammable gas lay frozen. When warmed, the gas breaks from its bond with oxygen and gushes to the surface. Exposed to air, methane spontaneously ignites. Flames thousands of feet high blasted into the sky. It's a very efficient greenhouse gas, and the world went into another phase of warming. This period lasted about five million years, and once again the planet was transformed. Here in Oregon in the United States, one of the changes brought on by the warming is plain to see. For Dr. Robert Sussman of Washington University in St. Louis, this is a place of fascination. Embedded here in stone is the first angiosperm, the broad-leafed flowering trees so common on Earth today, the oaks and maples and alders. This is a Katsura tree that lived probably 44 million years ago and it's about 25 meters tall and had a wide canopy. What we assume is that once the dinosaurs disappeared, that the angiosperms were, were very low and very small. And then oh, because of global warming, they came, became larger and larger. And this made an ideal environment for primates to evolve. Our ancestors, the primates, which grew to become monkeys, apes, and humans, still lived in the shelter and safety of trees. The branches of these new flowering trees grow out and across each other as they compete for sunlight. The primates now had new surroundings to live in. Food resources became more plentiful. Many primates still live in the broadleaf forests of the world. They could take advantage of all of the resources, mainly the fruit and the leaves, and also they didn't have to worry about the terrestrial predators find places to sleep and basically live in the trees. It, it developed a whole new environment for them. But living in tall trees does require good eyesight. 
Our primitive ancestor, Carpolestes, lived in the short trees of early forests. As the new broadleaf forests grew, another primate appeared. This one, Shoshonus, had radically different eyes, now facing forward. While the planet stayed warm and humid, the broadleaf forests were able to spread into higher latitudes. As they expanded their range, so too did the early primates. But the expansion was to be short-lived. Forces were still at work to make the climate change yet again, this time from the south. Today, Antarctica is a frozen continent covered by ice and glaciers. When Greenland and Europe were wrenched apart, the result was global warming. When the change came from the south, it was to be cold. Antarctica was part of the large continent Gondwana, joined to South America and Australia. Then, it had a temperate climate. The continent was warmed by currents that flowed down from the equator, much as the Gulf Stream warms parts of the north today. Antarctica became isolated as Gondwana was torn apart. Australia and South America drifted north and the circumpolar current encompassed Antarctica, locking in the frigid air. Antarctica froze, and the world changed. Temperatures which had been kept high because of the methane released from under the sea now plummeted. Broadleaf forests retreated. Primates were left stranded in pockets of forest before they too vanished. This area of the Sahara to the west of Egypt was once forest. Then it became a remnant patch before it turned to desert. Dr. Yusri Atiyah of the Egyptian Geological Museum searches for the remains of the primates that once lived here. And they are all around. So far, over 22 different species have been identified from the remnants of their jaws or skulls. One of the early primates that lived here is an ancestor called Catapithecus. When its skull was found in 1992, it stood out as being unique. The eyes are completely different to those of other primates of the same period. When the two skulls are compared, the eye sockets of one have no backing, while those of Catapithecus do. The bone behind the sockets is called the post-orbital septum. While it may seem unimportant, it was a crucial step in the evolution of primate eyesight. This feature is shared by many modern primates. Gibbons have it, so do chimps, 